Use the means of today to reach the people of today. The Church Speaks, an episode where the Holy Father, the Pope, and the Bishops of the Philippines speaks about their apostolic letters and exhortations to all Catholic Christians. Laudato Si, Way of the Cross in Preparation for Easter Reinterpreting the Lenten devotion of the Way of the Cross in the light of Pope Francis's encyclical on the care of our common home. This initiative was born from a collaboration sharing and personal awareness, a journey that includes the experiences and reflections generated by the need to pray during the COVID lockdown. The COVID-19 lockdown period caused many to feel lonely, abandoned, and estranged from their peer groups. In many cases, the presence of others became mediated by a screen. It was precisely during these hardest months of 2020 that the idea was born to create a way of the cross that links the 14th station of the way of the cross with Pope Francis Laudato Si encyclical. The central idea was to retrace Christ's journey to his death on the cross and his resurrection in order to restore a glimmer of hope for the future. In this way, the Laudato Si way of the cross was born. During Lent 2020, the global Catholic climate movement reinterpreted the way of the cross devotion in the light of Laudato Si. It came spontaneously from below from collective need to pray and renew confidence in the Lord in order to have the hope of overcoming the critical situation that the virus had created on an international level since March of last year. Inspired by Laudato Si, the Way of the Cross meditation took form thanks to the collaboration of the number of teams. The meditation associated with each station was connected with the theme from Laudato Si, and to a particular experience of the pandemic leading to a reflection, vulnerability, and suffering of the entire earth. For example, Veronica wiping the tears from Jesus' face was connected with the Syrian people to the tears of the poor. The death of Christ on the cross brought forth a reflection on the many deaths caused by the coronavirus which was brought the world to its knees. Pope Francis' principal invitation in Laudato Si is to become painfully aware to dare to turn what is happening in the world into our own personal suffering and thus to discover what each of us can do about it. From this arose the choice to transform into the painful awareness even our sins committed against the earth, urging us to listen to the cry of the earth and the poor. We shall continue the Pope's Catechesis next Sunday. Horatio Imperata Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other to see us through this crisis and led us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. 
Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Saint Paul the Apostle, pray for us. This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with Ricardo O. Santiago Sr., Steve G. Santiago and Family, Stu and Nancy Santiago and Family, Stephen and Joy Santiago and Family, Sally Mae Santiago Lim and Benedicto Lim Jr. and Family, Sunny Boy and Luella Santiago and Family, Alex P. Montañez and Family, Mercy Evangelista and Family, St. John Paul II College of Davao, Royal Bread House Incorporated, Tat and Gigi Coronel and Family, Teresita Villa Abrile, T. Linao Trucking Services, Mr. and Mrs. Protasio Takandong and Family, Dabao Durian Laundry Services Company, Shardan, JDB Diversified Incorporated, Melvin E. Aviles, Huelans Food House, Mr. and Mrs. Lucas B. Datoy and Family, Jess and Amelia Dizon, Gus and Sophie, Mrs. Ampi Casas and Family, Adolfo and Malu Ato, Purita and Lorenzo and Family, Felia Mido and Family. Offering of the Holy Mass Accept Most Holy Trinity, this sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the Divine Word, and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the Church, for my dear ones, and for myself. Amen. We pray for the intentions of our regular sponsors, choir members, donors, offers, and volunteers of this Holy Mass, especially the sponsoring group. E.B. Music Production Canada by Nelson Page, Mr. and Ms. Eugene and Ejid Belanger. Thanksgiving Intentions, Nida Tumalip, Anonymous, Carlos Tan and Family, Elsa Garcia and Family, Magdalena Kukam, Nelson Aguno, Gigi Limpin and Family, University of Mindanao, Josie Diaz, AVZ, Coco Lumber. Good Health, Lita Montalban, Mercy Evangelista, Linda Aguilar, Erning Aguilar, Henry and Lolita Evangelista. Birthday Intentions, Elsa Estomata, Gigi Limpin, Ben Batong, Luz Lanilio, Lina Oxales, Pasita Neri, Erlinda Aguilar. Special Intentions, Happy and Harmonious Relationship of Eugene and Ejid. Recovery and Healing of Emil Sison, Pai Cadena, Regina Cispedes, Arnel Famador, Julie Sanz, Linda Torrejos, Arias and Ben Batong, Esther G. Magbanwa. For the eternal repose of Rodolfo, Bernardo, Milagros, Luciana, Jermin, Erlinda, Claudio, Thelma, Marutas, Julio, Minandro Sr., Anastasio, Filipa, Eduardo Ernesto Sr., Manuel Renerio Sr., Conrada, Domingo Abraham Sr., Adelaida, Linda, Lourdes, Sofia, Abner, Adelina, Lito, Regino, Jacinto, Trinidad, David, Irineo, Melchorito, Sosimo. Those who died of COVID-19, all the souls in purgatory, all deceased benefactors, sponsors, and cooperators of the Pauline's Media Mission. A prayer for the sick. 
Lord and Father, God without end and Almighty, through your grace you gave us strength and help us in our weakness. In your mercy, touch your sick people, deliver them from their sicknesses, and restore their good health, so that assured of your goodness and love, they will praise and thank you in your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, the presider of this Mass is Father James Cervantes, M.I.C. Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception, Tugbuk, Davao City. The choir during this Mass is the FSP Choir, Davao City. Let us joyfully celebrate the banquet of love. Please stand as we start the Holy Mass. Hosanna to the Son of David. Bless is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole Church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of His Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, Why are you doing this? Reply, The master has need of it and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God, forever and ever. Amen. What we are about to hear, proclaimed, is a third song of the Lord's Servant. Its content foreshadows the preaching mission of Jesus and the tortures inflicted on him during his passion. The first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my bird, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The Word of the Lord. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. Indeed, many dogs surround me, a pack of evildoers closest upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God. They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me, O my help hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you I will proclaim your name to my brethren. 
In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. In a few dramatic sentences, St. Paul summarizes the total self-emptying and the supreme exaltation of God's Son. The Second Reading We are reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. And speak to God. According to Mark. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him Are you the king of the Jews? You he said to so. him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things he accused you of. Jesus gave him so further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, Pilate used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and be began to ask Pilate to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over, but the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him up release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do? 
with the man you call the king of the Jews. They shouted repeatedly. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has done? They only shouted the louder. So, Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them and, after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him with a purple and, weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of, of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place called Golgotha, which is translated, Place of the Sky. They gave him wine drugged with beer, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, you who destroys the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross that we see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land and at three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it and said, Look, he is only Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, wait, let us see if Elijah comes to me Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed at his last. All kneel and pause for a while. Please stand. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom, where the centurion who stood facing him saw how Jesus breathed his last and said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Uh, I remember a story of a mother and her teenage son. The teenage son didn't like the mother very much because of the way she looked. And one time after an argument between the mother and the son, the aunt was there also. The aunt asked, why do you hate your mother so much? And the teenage boy replied, because look at the way she looks. She has all, she, she's all disfigured. She has all these scars. She must have done something very bad in her life. And the aunt said, she never told you the story? And the boy said, asked, what story? 
And so the aunt said, you know, there was a great fire in the village many years ago. And then your mother came to the scene and everyone was outside and she was looking for you. And you were about, you were new, newly born, maybe one year old. And she's like, where's my son? And everybody had come out, they forgot about this boy. But the house was on fire. And they encouraged her not to go in because she might not survive. But your mother went in to the fire and she found you and she came out. But she came out with a lot of burns, scars on, on her body and her face. She has those scars because she saved your life. You know, and the boy reflected on this. And you know, when he, he would introduce his mother, he said, this is my mother. He would also say, it's, she is the most beautiful woman in my life. Because he understood where those scars came from. Have you ever asked Jesus? why he has so many scars. You know, this week, Jesus is going to show us how he got those scars. You know, he's going to demonstrate his love for us. Okay, we call this week Holy Week. It's also a week of God's love. No greater love is there than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. God lays down his very life for us to save us. You know, but the great irony is, is that although God is showing and demonstrating his great love for us, eh, where are his people? You know, when he entered Jerusalem, they said, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna to the King of David, right? But then by Friday, the people were saying, crucify him, crucify him. You know, let him save himself. Uh, how quickly, you know, people change. You know, and where were his followers? Where were all the disciples? The people that he had cured, the people that he had healed, the lepers, you know, the, the paralytic. Where were they? You know, the 5,000 that he fed with the miracle. Where were they? You know, the possessed who were freed by his words, by his actions. Where were they? You know, they left him. Even his apostles. You know, he chose 12 closest friends. Where were they? You know, only one followed him all the way to the, the cross. The beloved disciple John. Of course, his beloved, his mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Mary Magdalene, Mary, wife of Cleopas. But where was everyone else? You know, Jesus could say, My people, my people. Why have you abandoned me? You know, they left him. Uh, you know, the temptation is for all of us, you know, especially during Holy Week, is just to forget about Jesus. You know, even Christians, we just abandon Jesus. We neglect Jesus. He is demonstrating his great love for us, and we don't care. You know, and this is the week to, he is showing his great love. This is the week to also follow him with love. You know, to follow him every day. You know, follow him especially in the liturgy, the Mass. If you can attend the Mass or, or watch the Mass on TV or YouTube, I highly encourage you, listen to the readings. Listen to what Jesus is doing. You know, because he's doing this not for himself. He's doing this for us. He's, he's doing this to save us, you know, to save us from our sins so that we can be united with God. You know, allow yourself to be touched by his actions. Allow your emotions to also participate. You know, the readings that we did today, we all had a part. You know, it was like a drama because this week is a drama and we all have a part to play. You know, Jesus wants us to walk by his side. Jesus wants to pray by his side. You know, so I would encourage you, turn off the TV, turn off the gadgets, the noise, the music, the movies, so that we can really be with Jesus this week. 
2,000 years ago, many of his disciples didn't follow him. What will happen 2,000 years later? Will his disciples follow him now? You know, will they be with him now by his side? You know, let us say, yes, Jesus, I will be with you. Yes, Jesus, I will pray with you. Yes, Jesus, I will be by your side. I will not abandon you. I will not leave you alone. Uh, so let us meet Jesus' love with our love. Let this be a week of also demonstrating our love for Jesus. And then that will be a beautiful thing. You know, we will be united with Jesus in the holiest week of the year where he demonstrates his love for us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Full of trust in the Lord's compassionate love, let us present our petitions to Him, who is able to understand our difficulties and needs. Let us implore Him, Merciful Father, hear our prayer. Mercy, Father, hear our that all believers may always welcome the Lord Jesus with open hearts like those who welcomed him to Jerusalem. Let us pray. Merciful Father, hear our that the Holy Father, our Bishop, and our priests may continue to guide and encourage us with the holiness of their lives, to be faithful to Jesus. Let us pray. That all the members of the judiciary in our country may render justice without delay, avoid favoritism and corruption. Let us pray. that the victims of legal injustices may continue their quest for justice with moral strength and be given their due. Let us pray. That we may realize that the suffering endured by Jesus was also caused by our sinfulness and lack of repentance. Let us pray that the sick, the aged, and the people with disabilities may listen to the word of God and hope always for the healing power of the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Let us pray that all the deceased brothers and sisters may be admitted to the joys of eternal life in heaven, especially the victims of COVID-19, the deceased members of the sponsors, benefactors, and cooperators of Pauline Media Mission, through the mercy of God and the intercession of all the saints. 
Let us pray. The grace to walk with Jesus during this Holy Week, uh, prayerfully and lovingly, that we may have a deeper experience of God's love for us. Let us pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. Lord God, sustain us in, your, in our resolve to live as Jesus taught us. As we share in his suffering, may we also come to share in his glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, in joyful celebration, we too acclaim. Gives you praise. 
For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your breath, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again, we proclaim Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Romulo, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of our Lord and Lord, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let, us Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into the world. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who cannot receive Holy Communion, we pray the Spiritual Communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me, I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now, you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart. Detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart, I love you above all things, because you are infinite good and eternal happiness. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought to us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, before I give the final blessing, I wanted to mention that in this year of St. Joseph, uh, here in the Philippines, they will be, they will be doing a... a nationwide consecration uh, from the Shrine of St. Joseph in Cebu. It will be televised and all dioceses will be encouraged to participate. 
Uh, that will be on May 1, the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker. Uh, if you would like to participate and to prepare for this consecration of St. Joseph personally, individually, I would highly recommend getting this book, Consecration to St. Joseph. It's a 33-day preparation. There are, many, there are readings and prayers for each day. You'll really get to know uh, St. Joseph more, and he can help you to uh, come closer to Jesus and also in uh, honoring the Blessed Virgin Mary. So it's a beautiful book. I personally have done the consecration. I would recommend doing it as well. You will grow in your love for St. Joseph, especially in this year of St. Joseph. The Lord be with you. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. And seeds love. Oh, no.